I'm just uh, making a new uh, uh, Gantz creating bucket. I want to do uh, the copper oxide. So I'm making, I want to make it, uh, I need to make a large volume fast because I'm on my first uh, reactor coils, I'm probably using up all the Gantz I made in the last four months. So what I'm doing here is I've got a, a five gallon pail, which I've cut down to about nine inches with just a couple of cross members across. And then to get the copper plate for that, I've, I've bought some, uh, some copper pipe down at Home Depot. And what I do is I rip, I rip it on the table saw with the metal cutting blade right down the length of the pipe. And then, then I cut, in, cut up some, uh, then I cut up some uh, into le uh, lengths on the chop saw to get uh, to get my plate size. Now I got to unwind, un, uh, flatten it out. So I got a couple of uh, got to get a little bigger gap for that other pair of pliers. So I'll do a little bit of blacksmith work here. <laughs> flattened out no reason will be so now I'm gonna abuse the jaws on my vise by using them as an anvil gonna go in the, I'm gonna put some tabs on that and hook it on the bucket and then I'm also gonna go around and hook it on that and then the the other nano coated ones gonna go around the other way but uh, to get the, the tabs on there I'm gonna just put a line there now I'm gonna cut the tops down okay so now I'm gonna cut out the tabs that I'm to hold it to the side of the bucket. I'm also going to leave a little couple of stubs held up there for uh, to wrap the wires around. So when you're doing this, you got to be I have something to hold this uh, metal really solid. You can't just do this in your hands because if it catches on the blade, it'll it'll really uh, you're liable to get cut real bad. So grab it with some vice grips of some kind, and then you want to have a, a narrow slot in your around your table saw blade. You don't want any gaps in there. So, and then this, this is a special blade there for cutting uh, non-ferrous metals. So. So those are the two tabs. I got to bend, bend them over another quarter turn there to hook onto the side of the bucket. These two uh, little uh, piece of metal sticking up. Then I'm going to wrap the wire around there to connect my plates. So to get that other bend, I just clamp those other vice grips on there to, so I can bend it down. Now that's going to hang in my bucket like that. So I'll have, uh, I'm just like an, if they're right on the sides of the bucket, I think that's too far apart. So I'm just trying to get the plates a little closer together by running these two down the middle. So we're going to give that a try. We're going to going to take my power supply up here from uh, my ping pong balls and uh, 
and uh, put some voltage on this and some current to it. And we'll see how fast I can make copper uh, CO2 GANs. Hey, I got my uh, GANs producing pot set up. It's got uh, copper nano coated plates and uh, copper plates here. I'm running uh, no, about 0.2 amps and 0.3 volts through it from the power supply. And I got that little uh, uh, aquarium water pump that I'm bubbling water up here with. So you can see the bubbling away, the water air bubbles coming up from the pump. Now this has only been on for about uh, two hours tops and the water has turned a coppery color and I got that uh, greenish scum on top. So something's happening here more than what I used to have so we'll see if we got any gants tomorrow. My copper plates there, they were made from that uh, one inch uh, copper water pipe. Just cut it and flattened it out. And uh, if you're looking for some brass plate, you can buy uh, brass kick plates at the, at the hardware store. So that would be one source of getting some brass. Okay, here's my uh, copper and copper nano coated uh, Gantz pot that I turned on about 12 hours ago. Uh, I've already lost uh, the nano coating off the nano coated plates. Um, I took some uh, gants off the bottom of the of the pot here today and uh, this is what I've got in. Uh, there's still probably more, a lot more in the pot but this is what I've got in after 12 hours just uh, Took some off. I suspect there's a lot more in the bottom of the pot still that I haven't harvested. And uh, it's a coppery color, slight greenish tinge. So it's probably not, uh, it's more like copper gants instead of uh, CO, uh, CuO2 gants. So it's not, hasn't been, it's oxidized, it's uh, been produced too fast probably. Um, I'm gonna uh, just, uh, I've turned down the the current and the voltage uh, pretty low here and now I'm just going to uh, leave this uh, run here with the fish tank pumps going trying to you know, oxidize what I've got in the tank to get it more of a greeny color Let's see if that works so that's the update okay just an update on the CuO2 GANs that I collected um, there's it is. Uh, it's more than a cupful, maybe two cupfuls. Uh, I had uh, uh, the aquarium bubblers running in it for a, a day, and uh, some of it's oxidized to a more greenish color. Um, uh, the nanocoated plates are back in the nanocoated bucket, getting uh, nanocoated now for the second run. And next time around, I'm going to use less voltage and less amps and. Uh, and see if I can get a, a, a better uh, mix of uh, CuO2. And I think I still got a lot of copper, straight copper gants in this batch. So anyway, just one uh, one day in the, uh, I harvested that much out of the bucket using, uh, um, putting some voltage on, the, on my plates, so. Got a couple other buckets going here. This one's got copper plates and zinc plates. Uh, I just started that one. I can already see there's uh, some gants down on the bottom of that one, so it looks like it's going good. Uh, another bucket I got set up. Uh, this is uh, nano coat copper plates and uh, actually a bunch of iron bolts hanging on the side there. I'm not sure you can see, but there's a. Uh, I think that's a bunch of gants on the iron bolts. That's forming actually there's quite a bit of it there, so looks like this one's going good too. So I'm happy with my bucket setup for producing Gantz fast.